How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Blue Shifting, and welcome back to Rewrite. So, uh, yeah, last week got really, really fun. It was, uh, I, again, it, I, I, I shouldn't be surprised, really. Uh, this whole story is always about curveballs and, like, things kind of happening out of left field and always being a mystery and some new, like, secret to be uncovered and that leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another. But... I kind of thought that the theme of rewrite so far had been displayed that there were supernatural powers, but they had they were they were well grounded within like a certain rule set, like a hard magic system. Uh, very Brandon Sanderson in that regard, where like Gaia and Guardian had you know bounds, restrictions, and understandings of the world. Like essentially, they broke down what we would view as magic into essentially different types of sciences. There were gives and takes, there was research and development, and, you know, like, all of that. And so I genuinely expected the path to take, like, oh, there's a curse, we start investigating, and like every other thing we've investigated in these stories, it's like, there's a fairly reasonable explanation for it, even within the bounds of the typical, like, the, like, magic of, uh, I guess, like, the power spot, and the summoners, or the guardians, and I always assumed that that's what it was. Like, for instance, my guess was that the curse was actually a manifestation of Guardian program whisking away people who learned too much about somebody or some some event or something. But last episode, that really took a turn. It looks like there's genuinely a kind of curse thing going on. Like, what, what the nature of it is, we don't know. Maybe there... Like, I'm sure there's more to it than we can see now. But it's not feeling like a cover-up. And it really is starting to feel like an actual phenomena that we've been able to observe. There was a, a printer paper that had mysterious text. Text that altered between the time that Lucia saw it and it was handed to, to uh, Kotaru. Uh, the random cracking glass that was an omen that had been passed down through a specific set of like events and stories with very specific named people who actually like a boy who actually died and references to an orphanage where people apparently actually died and the naming and and the events and timelines are all syncing up to actually depict a real event that occurred and that's really crazy so yeah i'm really excited to see how this plays out especially because last part did a really good job with like the atmosphere and the tone to really make it feel like a like a strong, like supernatural mystery, very like Scooby Doo esque so far, except like with the genuine chills of like, oh gosh, like what if this actually happened and you witness this with your own eyes, even though you can't explain it in any meaningful way? What would you do? I love that stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens here because it looks like it is going to be something that uh, Kotaru and Lucia are going to be tied up in because they're the ones that are actually witnessing these things. And, uh, but we do also have, um, uh, Yoshino who knew the original kid that we're kind of looking into and he kind of gave us some of the words of advice. So he's probably going to be part of our little team of Scoobies to kind of figure it all out. Anyway, let's just jump right in, shall we? So we got home after all the crazy events we saw and I'm guessing it's going to follow us here. I switch on the TV, cook up some grub and chow down. After immersing myself in the daily routine, I finally managed to calm myself down. Dang, I'm pathetic. Guess I scare pretty easily, too. There's that weird photocopy, the glass cracking. If it were just one thing or another happening, I would have laughed it off as a mere coincidence. But for both of them to happen one after the other, I couldn't help but wonder if there really is a curse. Must be, must be because Yoshino kept scaring the crap out of me. But again, like, what was it that was scary? Was it the stories or the fact that the stories were corroborated? That's what was really scary. We were hearing from different sources that didn't seem commu to communicate with each other, similar tracks, and now we're even seeing manifestations along the same lines. That's what's scary about this. When he talked about it, he kept acting all scared. How, does, how often does that even happen? That's true, too. And, like, he could be messing with us, but Yoshino's... Like, he took such a serious tone with it, too. What happened to the guy who didn't think it was a curse? The two sides of my mind are du duking it out. One side finds it creepy and frightening. The other side is laughing, telling the other to relax and cheer up. One side is a curiosity that cannot be sated, while the other side cautious to the other uh, side cautions the other to be careful before we get in too deep and pull out. 
Dang, I can't just chicken out after coming this far. If I step away and say it's getting way too creepy, that'll only reinforce the idea for Yoshida and whoever else believes the curse is real. <sighs> In other words, I'll have done nothing but ca cause them all trouble. The moment I decided to stick my nose into the cursed girl business, I took the duty to see it all the way through. Isn't that why I convinced Yoshino to lend me his directory? 7th Elementary, Class 4-1. The directory is still folded up in my uniform pocket. Gingerly, I take it out again. <sighs> we really better call her. Like, she was in denial too, but like, I think if she understood like what we've been seeing, she might actually be on the same page with us. That's what class rep told me when she handed me the piece of paper with the creepy message. Do not wake me up. Otherwise you will. What the hell was that? I need to know the rest of the sentence. Don't just half the thing. The man tells me- and be a man, tell me straight. And my hand slides the folded up photocopy of the directory. But I don't want to open it. I photocopied the Oceano's directory and the message came out right after. Maybe the sheet of class rep photocopied wasn't the right one? Maybe a clean copy of the directory and brought it back home with me, but what actually got printed on it? I just had to open up the sheet of paper folded into four, the directory, but what if the message was printed on it instead? Oh, forget it. As if that actually happened. I made sure the photocopy came out right. There's no way I was seeing things. It's not possible. And that's the sad thing is like, I remember we looked at it. It was okay. It can't be possible. But what if? It actually does show up on it. Like hell it will. No way. Come on, let's go. I give a little battle cry to hype myself up. But if I didn't, does that mean I wouldn't have had the courage to open it? Before I finish pondering that thought, I just flip the paper open, revealing its contents to the light. I don't like this. Oh, no. What? Oh, okay. Oh, thank goodness. What a relief. On the sheet of paper is an honest-to-goodness copy of Yoshino's directory. No funny business. Just to be sure, I check various parts in detail. The backside even shine a light through the paper, but there's nothing weird about it. And I, del in delight I delight in examining the copy, now that I know there's nothing wrong with it. Seriously, Kotaru? There's no reason for me to keep checking the sheet of paper over and over. I'm just going through the motions and then repeating them obsessively. Once I realize that, I chuckle at myself and stop. This is the class directory of the 7th Elementary Class 4-1. There's a class of 20-something, about 50-50 guys to girls. The seats are determined by Japanese uh, phonetic order, so Yoshino's pretty far back in the seating arrangement. Let's think here. Kishida Ryuga was a guy. There's a good chance that anyone else he'd be friendly with is also a guy. I take the notes of the guys listed on the directory. I guess I just can't, I can just ask it, any of them one by one. It'd be really weird if someone called out to you from nowhere asking what uh, what happened seven years ago in elementary school. Even worse if it's some random dude on the other side of the line. And there might be a bunch of tight-lipped guys like Yoshino too. Alright, how do I broach the topic? Excuse me, but seven years ago I believe you had a classmate who died. I'd like to ask a few questions if that's alright. Does that work? I mean, it might. Depends on the person, and it depends on how scared they are of the situation. If, it, if they're genuinely freaked out, they might be terrified to even mention it. Could you tell me about him? Anything at all? Now I feel like some kind of detective. Being afraid isn't going to accomplish anything. As a member of the Occult Research Society, I can't let them see me cowering. I'm going to get to the bottom of this and prove this curse doesn't exist. That should free Yoshino and the rest of 4-1 from the fear of the curse. Anyway, musing here isn't doing anything. Let's get to calling. This clue, though. This is some real substance to it. This is the stuff of the top class article. If I manage to go all the way, this will be an absolute sensational. That'd be absolutely sensational. Where's my phone again? Still in my uniform pocket? The strap clinks against the other stuff in my pocket as I pull it out. What? The screen is pitch black. I don't remember turning it off, though. I hold the power button, but it doesn't turn back on. Huh, that's weird. The battery isn't that old yet, is it? I plug it into the charger, but the charging LED doesn't even flicker on. I open the back cover, try fiddling with the battery, but that doesn't work either. Weird. I don't remember doing anything that caused it to break. This happened the moment I decided to take action? Way to ruin the mood. Absolutely no response from the phone. It's dead. I don't have a landline, so without this, I've got no way to call people. And I doubt any electronic stores are open at this time of night. Guess I'll have to pass by one on the way home from home tomorrow to pick up a new one. Phones and apps nowadays are really nice and snappy. It's as good a time as any to get a new phone, I suppose. 
This is so weird, though. Another after borrowing the class directory and finally on the cusp of making progress investigating the cursed girl and this happens Could this be another warning from a uh, certain something? Must be a coincidence. I'll get a new phone tomorrow. I'll get right back to it, but if the phone breaks again I'll just think about that when it happens If just having a few unlucky coincidences was enough to call yourself cursed and the whole world have already be full of ghost stories uh, It kind of is it, I mean it re really it, it, it's a lot of ghost stories. Great. Lovely. Lovely. By the way, just, just, to, just to share, while we're here in a sharing mood, before whatever horrors we're about to encounter here. Um, so everyone grows up with different types of stories, and a lot of times they can be very localized. So I'm not sure if you have any specific ones that are localized to you. Maybe it's a specific place that's haunted, or very specific types of, like... Um, Oh, what are they called? It's like the creatures that like p creatures or be or 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 um, entities that people think might be cryptids. That's right, the cryptids from your area. So like America's you know known for the Bigfoot cryptid, but there's a cryptid that I grew up hearing stories about that um, I didn't get the impression were very widely spoken of outside of like the part of the country in the United States I lived in until a lot more recently. But that was actually. Um, Skin, uh, skinwalkers. Uh, you can also kind of refer to them as Wendigos, but I do believe those are technically two different, although rather similar stories. But the idea of a skinwalker was like a, a native, like a, like a, like a, like like the boogeyman of a lot of the native tribes that lived in Western United States, and the stories were that they were like shamans that were particularly bonded strongly to the to the spirits of the land, who you know out of a desire of like 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 evading mortality achieving greater power or or what like performed like horrific ritual type sacrifices and attained the power to shape change at will but kind of forsaking their humanity in the process and you know you always hear those stories but like i can't help but remember like sitting around like um we would have these reunions with my extended family and i had a lot on my mom's side like there's a lot she had a lot of siblings and so there's a lot of cousins so our family reunions were massive like they are whole ordeals and uh we would get together with a bunch of these cousins of you know, various ages but uh, a lot of us were very close and i remember we would talk about this especially because a few of them had had what they think were encounters with these types of ent entities and creatures. And uh, it's just like, it's like, I do, I believe that they were real. No, like even if they were, it wouldn't really matter. But like when we're talking about and kind of reminiscing in this story about like potentially like, like things that feel too real, I can't help but think about like in high school talking about these stories and hearing the, hearing like cousins who had like, I few of them having shared experiences that all were relatively similar or even like the same experience, but multiple people witnessing the same thing or thinking they saw the same thing gets a little eerie. So yeah, that was like the boogeyman I grew up with was the was skinwalkers. All right. So anyway, other scree screech the night at Yoshino's house. There's a ringing sound. It's painful and grating to put it lightly. Screech screech. It's the sound of glass shards rubbing against each other. Oh, Oh, I know exactly what that sounds like, and that's awful. In a dark corner, Yoshino crouches. He's up to something. Uh. <laughs> he chuckles to himself. The only thing that illuminates the entire corridor is a large flashlight placed beside him. As for why he's using a flashlight instead of turning the light on in the middle of the night, well, the lone ray of light from his flashlight only serves to make the darkness around him seem darker still. Sparkling... Prismatic beams of light scatter all around the floor. He gathers the fragments onto a newspaper. Huh. So I'm guessing, like, a, something shattered. At a glance, it looks like he'd broken something. He's now cleaning up the broken shards. If the corridor's lights won't turn on, he could at least turn on the light in another of the Jason rooms to brighten the corridor even a little bit more, but Yoshino doesn't do that. He can't. A ringtone echoes in the utter darkness. A small red flickering light in the dark hallway is the phone's LED flashing to indicate a call. However, the blinking red light only serves to accentuate the darkness around him. He almost looks like bait ready to be swallowed up by a deep sea creature. Yoshino stares at the beeping, blinking red LED on his phone. He stands up, only a stride profile lit by the flashlight's beam, he, and chuckles as he speaks to the, into the phone. 
久しぶりだな4年ぶりか Alright, Yoshino, what's up with that? What's up with this? Yo, Ksotare. Sakuya was doing it. Your name each came in the rain, Juni, then I was done. That was weird. So, is Yoshino gonna prank us? Or is he gone kind of crazy? Like, what's going on? Eh, about that. Terrible luck, really. My phone kicked the bucket. Gonna pass the store and uh, pass by, uh, pass by a store tomorrow. I'll get a new one. So oh, don't get me wrong here. This isn't cause some curse, all right. I heard companies these days make phones liable to break easier, so you're forced to buy new ones. It's probably that. Nan ni mo nai nara yokatta ze. Seize, o yakedo suru made chousa o tsuzukete miro. Right. I'll oh, screw you, wuss. <laughs> Just you relax. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this so called curse, and that's, your pi so that, that's got you pissing your pants. So, yeah. I keep yesterday's events to myself the creepy message, and especially the glass cracking. The window itself was shoddily taped together with some packing tape. It's rare, but there are some students who break windows as a prank. Yoshino seems to have assumed that's what happened for the time being. He doesn't think it's because of the curse. We promised that you'd tell me everything after three days. That means that's two days left. So then, uh. You better keep on your end of the deal. I won't stop looking into it either. No slacking off. <laughs> okay, so she was curious at least. All of a sudden, class rep chimes in from behind us. She crosses her arms and speaks as if she's grasped the situation and she looks exasperated. You see? W what do you see? Uh, uh, <clears throat> Strange photocopy? No, 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 not at all. That was perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. Clash rep, give, give me here a minute, could you? It's best if Yoshino doesn't hear anything about the creepy message. He's already being belligerent as, it, as he is. If he finds out about the message, that would seal his lips tight for good. I drag Clash up into the hallway. Alright, I'm gonna level with you here. No, 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 you've got it all wrong. <sighs> good luck, I'll explain, just listen to me. It's inevitable that this would lead to a misunderstanding. If I tell Clash Rep about it, wouldn't that get her wrapped up in the curse too? But if I don't explain it to her, she might think that everything that happened yesterday was all part of a prank to scare Yoshino. She'd probably spill the beans to Yoshino too, except Yoshino wouldn't think it was a prank at all. Well, that's the class rep, the most hard-headed person on Earth. He couldn't find anything more unlike her than something as vague as a curse. I decided to tell her everything, fully ready to be ridiculed. <laughs> yeah. That's the letter someone sent to the ORS. <laughs> Exactly. But Yoshino's genuinely seeming scared. I thought so too. It's actually the names and places there, so I thought that it's pretty easy to bust open. I found out that Yoshino was in the exact class, just like I said earlier. He's pretty scared about it, and he'll barely tell me anything. About the weird photocopy? It'll probably be a problem if Yoshino hears about it. You understand, right? That's the thing. It's not! Absolutely not me. I said that yesterday, didn't I? I'm telling you, there's some student made the weird photocopy just left in the tray, then you thought it was a mine instead. Uh, so then what? If it wasn't me and it wasn't just your imagination, then what could it be? Don't tell me it's actually because of uh, Asahi Haruka, Haruka, that's a cursed girl. So, what I photocopied yesterday is a class directory I borrowed from Yoshino. My phone died yesterday, so I couldn't make any calls. I'll get a new phone on the way home today and start making calls as soon as I can to fish out some info from the classmates then. That's something. That'd be great. He seems to be genuinely terrified. Talking about this, any of this is probably a bad idea. You should forget everything I told you to. Otherwise, you will... 
好んで首を突っ込みたくなる話ではないなしかしならば天王寺はなぜやばいと繰り返すこの話に首を突っ込む I mean, I'm in the occult research society. It'll make for a juicy article. The more crazy stuff that happens, the more I can equal parts terrified and excited to see even more. As a guy, I just can't back out now. If I turn tail and run, Yoshino's gonna have a field day with me. <laughs>、uh, yeah, we're pretty strange. Things look weird right now, but it's all the more reason to find out the truth. I don't know why my voice cracked right there. <laughs> you could call it grit. The more you try to scare me, the more it makes me want to keep going, I guess. With these sorts of things, doesn't it stir up a sense of curiosity? Or maybe a sense of adventure? I could see her actually being able to relate to a girl who was cursed, because she feels cursed too. Sorry? After she says that, I realize something. The circumstances of Asahi Haruka and Clash Rep are somewhat alike. Having the sunflowers wilting and the pets dying, and then getting blame shifted on her. With that putting things into perspective, she probably finds it difficult to say anything about Asahi Haruka. Yeah, when she came to the orphanage, the windows just happened to break and people just happened to get sick. <laughs> well, yeah, class, if she were literally a vampire, no one would be feeling too bad for her. Well, no one would be feeling too bad for her. Well, okay, that's not entirely true. If she were truly a vampire, her nature actually would be unfortunate, likely、um, an unfortunate circumstance rather than like, it's like she likely didn't, wouldn't have chosen that curse.、Um, But even then, like, at least then you'd have this idea of, like, well, she was acting and harming others, and thus there's a level of responsibility there. But yeah, no, she wasn't even that, I'm sure. Clash Rep's probably recalling her own troubled past. <sighs> there's no way for me to be certain exactly what she's remembering. Still, Clash Rep looks to be seriously pained. Just looking at her eyes filled with anguish is enough to tell me what she feels. Dang, I'm such an idiot. From the very start, I assumed that Asahi Haruka was cursed. Maybe、uh, Kishida Ryogo died of a sickness, but not because of a curse. Here I was talking big about how I'd figure out the truth of his death in his honor. And yet, by the same logic, I could have easily said that I'd figure out the truth for, about, in Asahi Haruka's honor. Why didn't I? Only now do I realize that my lack of sympathy and understanding indirectly hurt Class Rep, and I hang my head. <laughs> Yeah, I did think it was odd. He didn't even like, really think about that part. Dang. In a group of children, anyone who gets ostracized is treated with the utmost cruelty. Back in elementary, a kid touched something dirty, then the other kids would avoid them and tell them to stay away for fear of getting dirty themselves and throw the class into chaos. They'd yell about the yucky cooties and make barriers and all that. I guess the terms change depending on the place and age, but singling somebody out for being dirty is pretty much universal. Someone stepped on dog poop, all of a sudden everyone around them utters those phrases like some kind of chant and ostracizes them. Sometimes they'll try and rub up against someone else to share in the filth, but everyone else will keep chanting phrases and forcing them to keep their distance. By ostracizing the dirty kid, the other kids in the group gain some sense of unity. The more I analyze it, the more I realize how terrible it is to have a mere kid's game. I'm honestly dumbfounded. It's no game. Kids at that age just don't think of it as a form of bullying, so they just treat it as some kind of game. It is without question bullying, something that should, be never, should never be glossed over. You have a point. Curses don't exist in the world, which means there's no way that Asahi Haruka is cursed. I feel bad for her, really. She was merely the one that chosen to be sacrificed in those kids' cruel game of Odd One Out. I assumed the paranormal from the very beginning, even when I said I'd bust the whole curse business wide open. I had a fundamental misunderstanding. <laughs> Clash Rep empathizes with the girl, having suffered a similar experience, despite them being totally distant. Just looking at her expression, I feel so angry and mortified with myself for being so thoughtless and inconsiderate. I'm sorry. I had the wrong idea. 
the investigation of mine isn't for the sake of Yoshino and everyone else afraid of the curse. In the first place, isn't uh, Kishida Ryogo just the same as them? The true, the true purpose of this investigation isn't to help those afraid of the curse. I realize I should have been act actually be looking forward to the story for Asahi Haruki's sake. Haruka's sake. Thanks, class rep. I had the most important part of this all wrong. Tenoji. I don't even know whether to, the, this Asahi Haruka person really exists in the first place. If she does exist, then that means her reputation has been dragged through the mud for all these years. So, Darona. I was in the class of the yeah. That scale is a whole other level. Class Rep clenches her fist within her pure white gloves. Those gloves of hers still hide the wounds of her heart. Those wounds still have not healed. How long will she need to continue hiding them? And even then, they pale in comparison to the ones that must have been wrought upon Asahi Haruka. Even though I'd never met her, I could see vestiges of pain and anguish that she felt through class ref's expression. I guess this isn't something I should be doing for kicks anymore. I need to man up and see this through to the end. Thanks, class rep. I shouldn't have been scared about some silly curse. Getting scared already means I'm adding to the slander heaped upon her by believing that she's a cursed girl. Who cares about the photocopy? So what if a window cracked and my phone died? Don't even worry about it. I'll get the switch to... I'll get... I get to switch to the newest flagship bottle. Feeling better than ever. Sorry, I take it all back. The investigation is anything but dangerous. A string of unlucky coincidences just got me a little mixed up. I'm gonna finish what I started, understood? Have any questions? It, yeah, no. Class rep falters for a moment, perhaps unsure how to respond, but she says she has no problem with it. This investigation is about Asahi Haruka, but just indirectly, tangen tangentically, it also is about saving class rep, a girl named Konohana Lucia. This girl, Konohana Lucia, was sacrificed by her peers as a child. Even now, these gloves serve to hide her heart's emotional scars. Oh, it's kind of like nice and happy music now. One day, I want to do something to help heal those scars of hers. With that in mind, completing this investigation comes first. I'm going to clear the name of a Asahi Haruka, the cursed girl. Once I finally manage that, I might be able to learn how to pull away the thorns still embedded in Class Rep's heart. And I suppose that might go for her as well. I might go. I might go for her as well. Class Rep sees herself in uh, sees herself in Asahi Haruka, having gone through similar circumstances. Surely she'll be able to learn how to get over her own pain once this is all over. I'm sure this will be the right thing to do, especially after she nods and says to me. Of course, I figured you'd say that. Of course not. Let's do this thing. Let's crack 4-1's crappy ghost story wide open. I extend a handshake to class rep and she reciprocates. She leaves her glove on, of course, but the strength of her grip alone conveys her conviction. I return the firm handshake. Handshake. Seems like I found an unexpected partner. I mean, there are over 20 people in class 4-1. Calling them all by myself is a lot of trouble. Not to mention if it's a girl on the other end, if some guy on the phone who doesn't even know starts asking them to divulge details of the incident from years ago, well, they certainly wouldn't want anything to do with him. On the other hand, if it were a girl on the other end, they might see things differently. Glass Rep's going to be a big help with this investigation. We start tonight. Yes! Sweet, we're pumped up now! In a stroke of luck, the teachers ask Class Rep to photocopy something again, and we take the chance to make a copy of the directory for her as well. We head to the printing room and make a second copy of the directory. Uh-oh. I sense danger. <laughs> if this is a photocopy machine, right? The one you said that made the creepy message? Yeah, you let me make a photocopy first. I lift up the lid so like so, put the sheet of paper down, then pull the lid back down, then I push the start button. And that's it. Did I do anything wrong? You don't need to set anything if you're just making one copy, right? That's how copiers in convenience stores work too. That's actually good to know. That, that could be disastrous. 
In other words, this is what could have happened. Whoever used it just before me makes two copies of something, so that means the settings were left at two copies. That means that until the reset button was pressed, it would continue to make two copies of anything you threw at it. The last person who used it didn't reset the settings and simply left after the photocopying what they needed. After that, when I came to use the copier, press the start button without resetting the settings, it's totally possible it'd print two copies. This is an experiment. I set it to make two copies of the directory. Something still isn't setting right with me, though. The first copy comes out fine. The second one comes out a few seconds after that. With the small delay between the pages, there's no way I wouldn't have noticed. Which means I definitely only made one copy yesterday. If we're going with the possibility I pressed start button while the machine was still set at two copies, the theory doesn't hold much water. Outside of that, it still doesn't solve a crucial part of the puzzle. Either way, it should have photocopied the directory, right? That doesn't explain the weird message getting printed instead. But this thing's for business use, so maybe it takes faxes or something? <sighs> Fetch me. Well, this is a digital copier, right? Maybe someone else has scanned and saved on the machine and just happened to get the printing at the, at the perfect time? そういうデータは新しい原稿を読み取るたびに上書きされる。つまり誰が何をコピーしようとも天王寺が新しい原稿を読み取らせた時点で破棄されるわけだ。はあ。But does that mean that the imprint is still left behind? I guess we know other stuff probably got printed between last time and this time. But what if we asked it just to print something that was still in its memory? It doesn't have any features like storing previous scans? そういう機能は Class rep opens the side door of the copier. She continues talking while digging through the manual she takes from the machine. I'd expect no less from her. She's used to this. I suppose it's because she'd often has to make use of it that she already knows it so well. Despite her far-reaching expertise on the machine, something totally unfathomable will happen anyway. Is it actually the curse? Dang, we're here trying to clear Asahi Haruka's name and we're already getting tripped up on something so minor. I need to prove that what just happened isn't some kind of curse pretty frustrating. I really want to kick us off our investigation with this crack open right in the right behind the mysterious photocopy. That's true. And even if, hypothetically, it did, there'd be no reason for that to end up getting printed out in the first place. Hmm. You... There's uh, Nishi, uh, Nishi Kyujo uh, sneaks up out of nowhere, from nowhere behind us, and my heart nearly jumps out of my chest. I guess we were just that engrossed. Oh, uh, you see, will Miss uh, Nishi Kyujo actually help us crack the copy of Mystery's behavior? She can be pretty airheaded, though. She might just suggest we get a piece to exercise it or something. I oh, don't know, man. If only you knew. Right. Right. <laughs> Is she gonna suggest we did as a prank? Okay, okay. Oh, do tell. Maybe it's because Miss uh, Nishi Kyujo. Nishi Kyujo is such an airhead, the thought process is a lot more flexible. The smile tells us that she's realized this isn't going to be a straightforward problem, but a riddle to be solved. ケノ、あなたたちが見たという改現象をかなり近く再現できるわよ。どうやってですかちょっと準備するから廊下に出ててね。すぐに呼ぶから。オッケー。ミス、え、西木ゅうじょ、あ、西木ゅうじょ、ア
心当たりのないコピーが印刷されるそして2枚目が時間差で印刷されるこの2つの謎の片方から説明するわねまずは2枚目の時間差印刷からこの花さんは経験があるんじゃないこのコピー機調子が悪いからたまに休止に失敗するのよね。Feeding the paper. あ、ああ、湿気の多い時期だとよく休止失敗で噛み詰まりを起こす。Hmm, that kind of explains it, but again, like, that's still kind of shaky. うまく用紙をローラーが取れなくてコピー枚数より多く紙を休止してしまうこともあるのだ。Wait, so you mean that even if you tell it to photocopy just one copy, it'll sometimes grab two sheets of paper? うん、うん、ううう yeah, but usually that just spits out like one sheet that's printed and the other that's just a, another page. Oh, so, so she's describing like it almost feeds it through. Like a second line, like one behind the other, but the second one afterwards, like it's just kind of caught in like the wheels essentially. Naibu no roller wa ippo tsuko da kara, yobun ni totte shimata kami mo, uke zara ni haki dasa nak cha nara nai. Okay. Suruto, ataka mo insat zare te dete kita ka no yo ni, uke zara ni dete kuru to yu wake. So ka, naru hodo! So no error tai o doza ni wa, jakkan no jikan ga kakaru kara. So. その間に、手の時空は印刷が終わったと思って、ここを立ち去ったわけね。その時、コピー機のディスプレイには、エラー復旧中、廃止中と表示されていたはずよ。二、うん、人はディスプレイを見たガシャープナイクシェンジグランスズ、ボフォーシェイキングアヘッズ。How could this be? So the supernatural phenomenon was actually just caused by the whims of a slightly faulty photocopier? Okay, well, that explains why there were two sheets of paper, but then. Can you go to the other copy? Got it, could you go to the other copy? Hi, Jimmy, okay, you? Hi, did I say? Now that we have Miss、uh, Nishi Kyojo's permission, we head into the printing room. What does she do to the copier, I wonder? Kyoshi Miss Nitsuita was a good thing, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. 原稿と違うものが印刷されることを再現するわ。Miss、uh, Nishi Kyojo showed up a sheet of paper, presumably the thing that she's going to photocopy. It's some kind of article about various new age therapy bouquets in the weekly magazine. Ni- Nishi Kyojo 先生、それって使用のコピーでは。あ、oh, もう、意地悪言うと、ないわよ。<laughs> like, A,、hey, come on, just let's slide for today. So, what should we do? まずはこうして、普通にコピーを取るの。私は一枚でいいんだけど、休止ミスを再現する意味で、わざと二枚印刷するわね。The machine works the life and outcome two copies on the receptacle. 今は正常に動作したから、こうして二枚の特集ページが印刷されてる。でも、二枚目は休止ミスの排出だから、本当ならこの二枚目は何も印刷されてなくて白紙なの。Okay. いい right, we're following. Right. That explanation does hold at least, but it doesn't account for the weird message. She flips over the two sheets of paper to show us. What the? One of them is blank as expected. It's not like she had to print it on both sides, so of course the other side wouldn't have anything printed on it. But the other sheet isn't blank. It's got, I'm going to get you written on it. But upon closer look, it's written by the hand with a fountain pen, not actually photocopied. Wait, so does that mean. What? Recycle no e k a n de copy shi no uramen shi o o te yu no garu no. Hora, so ko ni mo hatte aru de shou? Oh no, really? Is that what it's gonna be? Avoid using blank copy paper when you can. Use recycled paper instead, instead vice principal. Such as written on a note on the wall. Wait, recycled paper doesn't just mean new paper from the old recycled sheets? So, so, I got that! Ironically, we also did this in my school growing up. Like, the,、uh, uh, in elementary school, they have a stack of like, one si- like pa- papers that had been used for one side and were done with, and they'd feed back into the printer to be reused. So, yeah, it makes sense. The end of the day, 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 the end of the day
This answers most of it, but there's still one thing that's still a problem. By recycled paper, do you mean? Yeah, yeah. Any photocopies that are already get uh, get who are that are already used get put in a little box for recycling. Normally, those just get sent off to a factory to get recycled, but not in this case. The front gets used for photocopying, and then the back gets used for photocopying too, doubling its use. That's what they mean by recycling paper. Sum it up, this is what happened. Most likely, some photo someone photocopied that creepy message for whatever reason that ended up being in a recycling bin. Then, someone loaded the paper from the recycling bin just before I used the machine. Somehow, that one sheet ended up in the paper tray. So then I made the first copy just fine and grabbed that. And that explains why only one side actually had something printed. And on the other side is something that someone else had printed before me, completely unrelated to what I had photocopied. Ah, dang! All the mysteries have been solved! Not quite! Now I can't help but be paranoid. <sighs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm yawning so much. I, don't I didn't feel that tired when I sat down to start recording. Anyway, I still feel like it is convenient that she's coming in just like having an explanation for this. But we know who she is. Thanks to Chihaya's route. And so maybe I wasn't actually all that far off and Guardian is involved in this somehow. But it is really strange then. Why go to all this trouble? Yeah, yeah, all the questions have been answered. Without even thinking, we face each other and strike a pose. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> Fast Rep slumps her shoulders and berates Miss uh, Nishikyojo, but her eyes look amused. I guess it really was just a couple of coincidences that happened to occur one after the other that got us thinking it was some kind of curse. <laughs> There's no such thing as curses. The curse girl, the curse girl business is all a bunch of pooey. Alright, we can do this. We can bust the ghost story wide open. Everything that Miss and Nishikyo Joe explained is also pretty juicy stuff. I'll definitely add it to my article. Trick? All I can see is that someone threw a rock at the window. Didn't you say that yourself yesterday? Then whoever did it was fast on their feet. My cell phone dying was all another coincidence. That's right, every single dang thing that happened was nothing but a coincidence. If you think it's caused by some curse, then you start interpreting everything that way. In other words, you become afraid of an illusion that you created in your own head. Things are going good for us. We just have to logically deduce everything, just like we did earlier, and arrive at a scientifically sound answer. Miss Nishikyoji uh, really shows us the ropes back there. It'd be great to have her as the ORS's advisor, even. I will say this is kind of like, um, like, it's actually, while there's a lot of, like, mystique and probably more to this than meets the eye for the sake of a story, in reality, Occam's Razor does provide a really good, like, kind of principle to follow. The most likely outcome is most, it, like, the most possible outcome is usually the correct answer. Like, the more chaotic elements you have to introduce, the more random chance you have to introduce, and yet, again, the more like unconfirmable events you have to introduce into a theory, the less likely it is to actually be true. Like, um, 
guess a good example would be something like um, like flat earthers and all that. Like, there's genuine tests you can do that can disprove the flat earth theory really easily. Um, you can watch a documentary about it where they literally prove their th- the theory false, but they refuse to see it that way. Uh, but even if you didn't go off of that, there's just so much about our world and like the the universe and and like like our solar system that just makes sense with a with a with a spherical planet that doesn't really make sense with a flat one like the best one is that like a flat earthers have to say that like earth is flat but all the planets are around because we can see them clearly as rotating spheres but we're the exception it's like why would that be the case why would our planet be the only planet in the solar system that just operates differently than all the other ones around us despite how similar we are to them it's like it breaks down when you actually start really applying some thought to it and really start looking for explanations that don't require like supernatural intervention in order to be achieved but i have a feeling the story is going to take a different direction because this story is about supernaturals anyway see you class rep I'm gonna head over to the phone store, gonna get me a brand spanking new phone. Aye aye. Give you a call after I'm done eating. We can start making calls after that. Um, Aww. Alright, later then. Tedoji cheerfully waves his hands and disappears behind the corner. I should do my best as well. I will clear the name of Asahi Haruka and use this as a chance to rid myself of my emotional scars. Oh, she's literally thinking the same thing. As for Tenoji, he seems intent on reclaiming her honor, and perhaps showing me something as well. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty big leap to be able to jump back from. That's pretty impressive. Even I can tell that my expression is loosening up. Tenoji Kotaru, was it? He can be a meddlesome fellow, but I can't say I entirely dislike him. He's been around for, around for me when I needed it most. Then perhaps... Perhaps I would not be do- uh, donning these white gloves as I do now. No, let's not get into what ifs. Demona. Denoji. Hmm. Interesting. I speak out loud, but swallow the, the rest of my words. Miss Nishi Kyojo's deduction was certainly a- able to explain the strange phenomena in the printing room, but. There's still no explanation for how that disturbing message somehow had another line up here. Was I merely seeing things? But that cannot be. I saw only one line, do not wake me up, in the printing room, and I'm absolutely certain of that. Yet somehow it turned into two lines of text by the time I handed it to Tenoji. I have not told Tenoji about that, I kept it to myself. Tenoji will clear the name of Asahi Haruka, and then show me how to heal my painful scars. I should refrain from making any remarks that will dampen his enthusiasm. For now, I should leave him to do the ways he pleases and offer assistance in any way I can. Acknowledging this curse is akin to admitting defeat. I come to stop and clench my fists and harden my resolve. Oh no. Oh no. Why'd the sky go black? Shatter. Before my very eyes, there's a shower of glass fragments and the moment my vision goes dim. I quickly recognize the cause. Looking above me, I see the streetlight bulb has exploded. Had I walked one step closer, those fragments might have rained down right on top of me. Oh boy. Guess it really was just a couple coincidences that happened to occur one after the other that got us thinking it was some kind of curse. As you say, Tenoji Kotaru, curses could not possibly exist, right? <laughs> Yeah, but but you got there's good reason for that this time. Nasakina Actually, a more believable explanation would be that the light bulb had burned out. With some industrial strength lights, like, they literally burn out with a f- with passion and die. Oh, no, no. As if in response to my outburst, another streetlight explodes. 
I glance up at the streetlight, still raining shards of glass. There isn't a single spot where the pebble could have been launched into the bulb. The bulb is up high and is rather small for a target. Is there even a possible to throw a pebble at it that accurately and with enough force to actually break it? Must be a coincidence. The bulbs were not connected properly. That causes it to short circuit. That, that must be it. If Tenoji were here, that's what he would say, no doubt. After I convince myself that that's what happened, I look down and, there's, and I see someone's shadow in front of me. Uh, how? I don't hear a voice, but how, why do you wake me up? That's what the girl says. But when did this girl appear? Her hair is done in an old-fashioned bowl cut. Before I realized it, before I realized that she had appeared before me without making a single sound. Her bangs are long, long enough to obscure her eyes, even though I can't see them. I can tell that she is staring straight at me. Nani? Kimi? Dokonoko? Why do you wake me up? That's a disconcerting sound. The way she dresses me, it's an obvious tell. She already knew from the very beginning just who this girl was. The bow cut girl continues to ask the same question, but I have no answer to give her. You and I, we're the same, aren't we? Carrying the same sadness. I... Even though I never wanted to remember the memories of being jeered at, of being called unclean, returned to me. And then memories that aren't even mine begin to mix in. Memories of a place I've never seen, a place I know nothing of. There are children frolicking around, the bullcut girl approaches them, they turn silent and run away. These are sad memories. These memories must be the girls, no doubt. A pair of outcasts sharing the same sadness, her memories and mine intersect. That's why I know her name. Oh, oh my god. Oh no. The girl finally speaks to me in her own voice. <笑>こかいするな。私たちはお前の誤解を解こうとしている。天王寺は好き目だし、乱暴だし、あまり尊敬できるところはないが。Oh <笑> I could finally rest. I don't want to remember anymore. I can't remember. That's why I could sleep in peace. But please don't rouse me from my sleep. Please don't wake me up. あなただって。そうでしょ。その白い手袋がどんな悲しみを隠しているのか。私にはわかる。私にだけわかる。のボイ。その傷を誰かに暴かれたい。<笑> I look down and bite my lip. Certainly, I do not ever want to remember those sad, painful days, nor will the mental wounds ever heal. At least that's what I thought. でも it's a little weird. Like, it's cool, and it's great for the story, but it's a little weird that she already has this much faith in Tenoji. Like, why would Kotaru be able to do what she ever could before? わかるでしょ。<laughs> Behind her hair, a simple glint in her eye pierces right through me. It's something I cannot put into words. It's both direct and yet abstract. As Asahi Haruka projects her memories onto me. There are memories of her bringing death into so many, just through her existence. Memories of a painful past being persecuted by everyone. They're cover conveyed unto me directly without any words. <laughs> Maybe, maybe it's, it is like, she talks about like the same sadness and it could be referencing the, like kind of the more bullying aspect, but what if it's not? What if it's like, what if there was a reason why Lucia ki like ended up leading to the deaths of those like plants and animals, right? What if it was literally a, like a, like a kind of a, a power or a curse or something 
And what if Lucia wasn't the first or only person to have it? What if it's an actual thing? Like, what if it's a superpower, essentially, right? What if it's, what if that's what she means? They carry the same sadness. It's like they carry the same mutation, the same ability. That might be it. Because you have to. Really? That's so sad. I thought we were the same, but you don't understand my pain, do you? Do not wake me up. Asahi Haruka repeats her very first message once more. She follows into in, into the into its conclusion. Otherwise you will. Hmm. So by bringing her in and by waking her up, somehow we'll inherit that ability? A cold gust of wind blows between us. The breeze blows her hair apart. Dust gets into my eyes and I rub them to clear it away. Meanwhile, the girl vanishes with the dust, as if she had never even been there to begin with. Still, her voice continues to ring in my ears. You'll experience the same pain and suffering as I did. Unclean, Lucia. Get away, get away. Stay away from our sunflowers. You were finally freed from those sad and painful memories. Do you want to return to those days? You have such a fun life today. If you relive the same sad things that happened in the past even once, it could all come crashing down. Hey, can you hear me? Unclean Lucia, unclean Lucia. <laughs> Great, cool. Ghost girl is an awful bully. She learned well. I fall to my knees, assaulted by the, chi the chill and unth unthinkable as, as uh, in this October fall, a shiver hugging my shoulders. I slap myself on cheeks on my cheeks and shake my head a few times. Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy! Oh man. I have to believe. No, I have to convince myself of that. Otherwise, my mind will be overtaken by the memories of everyone gazing up on me with scorn. Ugh. I find it more and more difficult to suppress these dark feelings welling up inside me. I want to scream. I want to bottle up all these feelings and pain and anguish and scream them all away. Otherwise, my, my mind will be overwhelmed with these needle needles stabbing away at everything. Ah. Call, call someone. I don't care who. Call, talk to someone, a friend. Ooh, hang on. That's interesting. Even though you were still having taken those gloves off. Sorry, sorry. You are not Asahi Haruka. What if she is? What if she, this is girl and the curse of this girl isn't actually a curse? What if it's just her? Like, what if this was actually her history and part of her, like, healing herself is she tried to separate herself from that past completely, got a new name, and, and, and everything. And what if this child, which only she seems to be able to see, is a manifestation of, 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 of her? Like, what if it's actually a part of her past that was, like, locked away or something? That'd be really cool. Like, you, like, like that, and that would be why, like, she can, like, have a conversation with this girl randomly. It's like, it's not really a conversation. It's her past, a past that she's rejected. And that might be why they, like, what's the, what's the saying? Like... Um, like it, it certainly knows a lot about her history and can torment her with her own memories. It's like that that could would track with that. And then, where does it say? You understand my pain. We carry the same sadness. 
What if it's literal? Like, what if it's literally the same sadness? Like, we're the same, carrying the same sadness, because we are the same person. Unclean Lucia, go away, go away. Stay away from our sunflowers. What the heck did I even do, do to kill my phone? Even my phone's SD card is fried. Thankfully, I had a store make a backup for me when I passed by on a whim a few months ago, so I was able to recover at least some of my data. Unfortunately, the apps I downloaded recently, my ringtones all went poof. Well, whatever. Anyway, I managed to switch to a new flagship phone. Feels pretty weird, but I put on my usual phone strap and it's already feeling much more familiar. Good thing I jotted down Classcraft's number. If I didn't, I wouldn't be able to get in touch with her until tomorrow. Alright. I could continue. I do want to hear about this conversation between the two of them after that whole incident, but I think we might save it for next week because I worry we're going to be launching right into like a whole thing. And we've been doing this for a bit. So, yeah. I've, I'm in this stage where I'm kind of spitballing ideas. If I'm lucky enough and I might actually hit the truth, obviously don't tell me, but like don't be super surprised. Like this happened in um, Steins Gate where. I was able to make a pretty solid prediction about two of the characters and how they were um, linked to each other. But the problem is like while people were like people checked it up and like, were praising me in the comments saying like wow you you were able to piece that together from a long ways off. Like I was like sure thanks but like you gotta also remember if you look at it in context there were like five other theories I threw out there that were all awful and way off the mark. Like yeah maybe I can land it sometimes. I have a decent thought for how stories tend to go. Um, I always get surprised by them still, and I and it doesn't tend to to make them an unenjoyable experience even if I do guess right. But um, I have had a pretty decent history at being able to predict story beats and kind of see where they go. Um, rewrite's been throwing me for lots of loops though, so I, I I would be shocked if I actually guessed correctly. But I feel like I spot I spat out a lot of theories today, and so it kind of makes me wonder like maybe I'm hitting kind of close. But the only reason why I even believe that is because I have, with the Chihaya route, I already know things like superpowers are real. I know that Guardian is real and that teacher that helped us with the printer is actually a member of said Guardian. Like, because I know that, I'm primed to be able to maybe suss things out a bit better this time around. So, like, make sh like don't be, like, super... I, I, if I'm even getting close... Don't be impressed. I have a lot of preloaded answers ready to go for this, so unfortunately, um, it's definitely not as blind as it could have been. The Chihaya stuff, even that, like, even with Chihaya, um, and I, and knowing what I knew from the first route um, with uh, Kotori, like that was a lot more in the blind to whatever like to some of the other side characters but since after post jihaya there's a lot I, I do know now so it's not nearly as miraculous if i do guess right i still love guessing though i, li I like walking you through my own thought process uh i know a lot of you like that as well but i think it's fun to be able to share that not just for myself to share it with you but I've always enjoyed when people do that with me. Like, if I'm watching a movie or, like, I read a, like, or a friend of mine reads a favorite book, I love just letting them rant to me about what they think about it. Like, what are their favorite scenes? What are their favorite characters? And then what do they think is going to happen next? I love it. I could sit and just listen to that for days, just how much fun it is. And so that's why I like to share it with you. Is even if it's full of these crazy rants that are full of just random, like, theories that have no bearing at all in reality... I, d I think even if it's annoying when I get it really wrong, I think a lot of you probably enjoy hearing my thoughts because I enjoy it. And this channel's always been that. Like, I'm not chasing clout, I'm not trying to follow trends or do what's, like, specifically successful. I'm making content I love and would love to watch. And so I hope you keep enjoying it, especially to the, the thank you for your support, for, you know, whatever you do, whether you're liking, subbing, patrons or whatever i don't care thank you all so much for being here and thank you for just sharing these journeys with me i'm looking forward to seeing this next week but i do need a break
As if the yawning was attesting to, I probably need to go and take a little bit of a breather. Might be up a little too late. But that's how these things go. Hope you have a great rest of your week. I'm hoping to have a patron cast coming up pretty soon. And I've also like, uh, I've got a, a special project I'm going to start working on. Um, but I can't say anything about it. I'm not even sure I'll tell the patrons about it. Like I might keep it a secret even from them. Uh, but just know that there's some something kind of fun. At least I think it's going to be fun in the near future. I'm actually, and I'm laying the groundwork for it now, uh, but it'll be a few weeks before we see it. So just keep that in mind. Something fun's on the horizon and I look forward to sharing it with you all. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next video, watching me, ever see me next. I'll see you there.